TBT. A friend of mine who said, oh, no, no, no. It's happening like, here. Like, right here. And I was in Los Angeles at the time, and he said, within any three blocks from where we're standing, I was inside of a synagogue. He said, within any three blocks where we're standing, you can go buy somebody. And I was floored by the notion of that. Who was that friend that you were talking to, Ashton? That you were so floored about the notion of being able to buy someone three blocks away. Did you ever take it upon yourself to have that conversation with your self-professed opinion leader, Danny Masterson, when y'all were just a few blocks away from Celebrity Center? Did you ever ask yourself, yes, three blocks away, you can go buy someone, literally? As if Danny Masterson didn't go buy someone for himself the first time he got accused, the first time he got KR'd by the women that he went out to D with out to D, the very real felony he got convicted of. So in what world are you running an organization where you're pitching in front of all manner of people that you really were so floored about what you learned, about how someone could find somebody three blocks away from that synagogue that you were in. So can you make that make sense real quick? Here, um, as a young man uh, raised and, and, and brought up in the public school system, I pledge my allegiance to that flag every single day. And... The honor, maybe one of the greatest honors in my life today, is to be here uh, and leverage the work that, that I've done as testimony that may in some way benefit this nation that I love. I'd like to start by saying thank you to Chairman Corker for your leadership in this endeavor and to Senator Cardin. Uh, your leadership has been uh, extraordinary, and I'd like to also say thank you to the rest of the committee that has supported this effort, this is a bipartisan effort, and in a country that is riddled with bipartisan separation on so many things, slavery seems to come up as one of these issues that we can all agree upon. And I applaud you for your agreement, and I believe in you and your leadership and your ability to take us out of it. I'm here today to defend slavery a bipartisan issue we couldn't agree with you more ashton slavery is a bipartisan issue happening in california and also being state sanctioned and enabled in florida so bipartisan this exact nation has allowed the scourge of child trafficking slaves inside hotels where minors have been used, where people have been literally given the option of buying time for themselves inside those hotels to go over KRs, including but not limited to KRs, where the nature of those KRs, knowledge reports, written knowledge reports with exact time, place, form, and event of the felony is being data mined by minors. So see if you can go check with your Thor organization and see if y'all 
can really use that word that you all used to love to use, leverage. If you can leverage your organization to do jackal about the problem that wasn't that far away from where you were every last shred of time you went to a barbecue at Danny's house, every last shred of time that y'all were partying it up close to Franklin Avenue, where Celebrity Center, the place that you went and did all manner of Christmas carols, while literal minors that weren't celebs, that weren't powerful, that didn't have your power, your intellect, and your ability to leverage their entitlement to help themselves. Supported this effort. This is a bipartisan effort. And in a country that is riddled with bipartisan separation on so many things, slavery seems to come up as one of these issues that we can all agree upon. And I applaud you for your agreement and I believe in you and your leadership and your ability to take us out of it. Well, we don't agree that anyone in Congress's leadership has gotten anyone out of it whatsoever, Ashton. In fact, we believe that Congress is literally playing dumb as we speak in pretending they have not a shred of a clue of what in the hell is going on inside of those hotels. So call us not so infantile as you seem to be. Really thinking that the people that you are pitching yourself as America's very anti whatever in the hell you said you are being. Whatever role you're playing is not just for make belief anymore. So while you might be the mouthpiece of Thor, with what shred of credibility can you really stand there advocating for kids that need real advocates, not just actors like yourself that are saying that you really care, but we're finding out that you really, really actually don't. I'm here today to defend the right to pursue happiness. It's a simple notion, the right to pursue happiness. It's bestowed upon all of us by our constitution. Every citizen of this country has the right to pursue it. And I believe that it, it, it is incumbent upon us as citizens of this nation, as Americans, to bestow that right upon others, upon each other and upon the rest of the world. Oh yeah, Ashton, upon the rest of the world. And you keep going like this, as if really moving your hand back and forth like this nonstop at nauseum is really going to have us buying your pitch. Well, apparently the people at Congress were swayed by your performance. But in this year 2023, we couldn't have any type of swaying, pitching how America of all countries, America that did take it upon itself to enshrine the memos of a convicted and indicted felon, L. Ron Hubbard, as a so-called whatever in the hell they're saying he is today in this year 2023. So with what type of face can America say that it really wants to stop child trafficking while not stopping a shred of child trafficking. But the right to pursue happiness for so many is stripped away. It's raped. It's abused. It's taken by force, fraud, or coercion. It is sold 
for the momentary happiness of another. Sold for the momentary happiness of another, Ashton, is literally what we couldn't have said better ourselves. So shout out to you for being fully aware of what the problem is without also having a shred of a clue of what the problem actually is. When your mentor, Danny Masterson, when your friend of two decades plus, Danny Masterson, was knowledge report to have done what he got convicted of, Ashton, as if you don't know, call Luke Watson. Ask him, what in the literal hell happened that night, Luke? What did you do next morning, Luke? What does your mom, Susan Watson, at the Celebrity Center find out about exactly Luke? And why was Miranda Scoggins, the minor that got trained to be a so-called ethics officer, got tapped to deal with the one that gave you a moral compass, according to you, the one that if it wasn't for him, you would have ended up in a complete drugged out state. Well, your cognitive dissonance is not helping your case over not having been in a drugged out state, given that you might as well be acting without a shred of self-awareness on why just opening and closing your mouth, blabbing mouths, blabbing words at the screen and at the people that are listening to you, really holding court because we really need these Hollywood tech bro entrepreneurs of the year that don't have a shady AF past to come and solve a very real problem that this country is very realistically aware of, yet it can't do a shred of a thing about it. And this is about the time uh, when I start talking about politics that the internet trolls tell me to stick to my day job. Uh, so I'd like to talk about my day job. Ha, 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 the internet trolls. Aren't you such a victim of internet trolls, Ashton? As if your little pathetic Congress performance could not be literally subjecting you to become awarded with literal actor of the year Troll, because it seems to us that have suffered the very real crime of trafficking as minors inside those hotels, the ones that were tapped to be used for other people's quick happiness, that the troll is you, Ashton. You're the one that's trolling us. It's not the other way around. As you sit there with your entitlement, as you sit there with your $275 million, as you sit there purporting that you really, really do care. But the internet trolls are going to tell you to stick to your day job. What type of job do you actually in the literal hell have, Ashton? Because maybe really start defining what it is that your job is. Because in this year, 2023, we could literally not be any more confused, any more dumbfounded, any more baffled as to what in the literal hell your job actually is, literally. My day job is as the chairman and the co-founder of Thorn. We build software.
What is it with you and David Miscavige's being chairman of a lot of stuff? You are the chairman. So write that on your notes, guys. This is the chairman of this thing that he's about to pitch. So check it out. To fight human trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. And that's our core mission. My other day job is that of the father of two, a two-month-old and a two-year-old. And as part of that job that I take very seriously, I believe that it is my effort to defend their right to pursue happiness and to ensure a society and government that defends it as well. So with what face are you purporting that you really want to help society? Ashton, literally with what literal face are you sitting there performing this theatrics about how as the chairman of Thor, you really want to end the very real scourge of human trafficking that takes place, but not if it takes place inside your boy, Danny Masterson's hotel, right? Inside your girl, Laura Prepon's hotel, right? If those two were frequenting the hotel, then it doesn't matter what type of trafficking was going on. It doesn't matter what type of kids being offered so people could pay to have their little happiness with them. Give me my ethics handling. Come on. Tell me to stop masturbating as a full-grown man because that was really my job, right, Ashton? Starting at, tw at age 12, I was being trained to actually data mine including but not limited to disgusting sexual perversions out of these adults. I mean, if you literally don't know what in the literal abominable hell I could possibly be thinking about, here's a little one for you to not act so confused. Here's from the sec check, okay, that is can be found on my community tabs. You can like scroll down and find the golden rod where it states, and I quote, have you ever used sex as punishment? Have you ever hurt your spouse sexually? So, have you ever wanted to act in a depraved way with your 2D spouse. So I know you can't see it here, but this is a golden rod issued inside those hotels where these people were data mining, including but not limited to those questions. So call up Carol Masterson real quick and say, yo, Carol, what in the literal hell are these questionnaires? that are being outed all over the internet as if these things were not just a Google away. Well, we're now making it easier so you don't have to even Google. So your team doesn't have to literally type a Google to be like, what kind of security questions could be asked of Danny? Because it's not like everyone inside the hotel found out that these girls, after what Danny did to him, they were just, you know, BSing their way around. And they were sec checked to make sure they weren't making false allegations. That I can guarantee you. In this confessional, have you said something only to impress me? In this confessional, have you told me part of a withhold but not the rest? So believe you me, there's all manner of checkpoints that could be checked if people were just going to raise any old BS allegation for themselves. Never mind that that also doesn't make sense given that the Jane Doe's were told that they needed to source out 
what they did that prompted Danny to have those evil purposes on them. It's called a motivator, Ashton. A motivator and ask Carol Masterson to explain to you what a motivator means in Scientology. Because I because this word here in Scientology is not what you're thinking to yourself right now. In the English language, a motivator would have been what was their motive to lie? Why would they lie about something? But in Scientology, a motivator is what did they do themselves as criminals, as our victim criminals themselves that literally cost themselves to have a felony perpetrated on them. So start checking up on that and get with your team and call Laura Prepon and go call every last shred of Scientologists that's on your lines, Ashton, that you might know to see if we're just making it all up or if there's actual policies to back up what we're saying. And there's actual policies and memos written by a convicted felon that Carol Masterson was all about endorsing and applying for herself and applying to, including, but not limited to, all her children, starting from Danny, the oldest one, all the way down to Chris Masterson, all the way down to Jordan Masterson, all the way down to Alana Masterson. All of them were given ethics handlings. All of them were sec checked. All of them got their withholds pulled. So none of them can say they had not a shred of a clue about anything. Sorry, not in this year, 2023. Another year, sure. Another year, all manner of fake pitches could have been literally thrown at the wall without anyone having a shred of a clue. But you know what? Today, times have changed. That's the bad news for y'all. As part of my anti-trafficking work, I've met victims in Russia. I've met victims in India. I've met victims that have been trafficked from Mexico, victims in New York and New Jersey and all across our country. Well, shout out to me that was trafficked from Mexico. And shout out to all the other countries where you can ask Dave Pettit or ask Carol Masterson to ask Dave Pettit if they have anyone from Russia in there that was ever a minor. If they have anyone in from Mexico in those hotels that was also ever a minor brought into this country. And start going down your list of countries where you really have found a lot of traffic victims. But never mind that the victims that you find a few blocks away from your Danny Masterson pad that you used to be a regular in a few blocks away from CC. Let's go hang out. Let's go have a barbecue. Let's call all your friends. Invite all the girls. So the trafficking is happening literally blocks away from your best friend's house. But apparently you don't have a shred of a clue about anything. I've been on FBI raids where I've seen things that no person should ever see. I've seen video content of a child that's the same age as mine being raped by an American man that was a sex tourist in Cambodia. And this child was so conditioned by her environment that she thought she was engaging in play. I've been on the other end of a phone call from my team. Mm. 
Well, why are you watching all that shit? That's our first question. Why in the literal hell do you need to be checking out those disgusting, abominable videos? Literally start by answering that right there. Since you've been on so many FBI raids where you saw all manner of things and you've been watching all manner of videos of disgusting stuff where children think that they're engaged in play, where what the hell did you think we thought we were engaged in, Ashton, when we were told to ask people as 12-year-olds, including but not limited to, have you committed any felony for which you have not been arrested? What do you think our level of naivete and gullibility and thought we were doing something official sounded like, felt like, and was like inside of the hotels where Danny Masterson was a paid member to, where apparently you did take it upon yourself to go visit and check out for yourself. And then your other bestie, Laura Prepon, another big time donor of those hotels, condoning and literally putting her money where her mouth was for how many decades only to come out and say nothing other than, oh yeah, that was so like five years ago, you guys. When these um, allegations came up, I really, really reconsidered what in the hell I was doing. I reconsidered it all so much that it floated, even though there's no hotel I can go to that will tell me that all of what I paid for and endorsed as a full-blown Hollywood celebrity gets to float anywhere. Right, Laura Prepon? Asking for my help because we had received a call from the Department of Homeland Security telling us that a seven-year-old girl was being sexually abused and that content was being spread around the dark web and she had been being abused and they'd watched her for three years and they could not find the perpetrator. Asking us for help. Well, you're purporting that you're an organization that is going to help. So why is that so shocking? Do you really have the technology to track these people down? And are you really wanting to do that? Or why should we really feel that it's so shocking that these organizations that apparently don't have enough billions, as it is, apparently the FBI, the very badly funded FBI and Homeland Security, the two departments that literally could not be more desperate to tap randoms such as yourself that has no shred of a clue handling such things, has no shred of background, but you know, I am a Hollywood celebrity. I can do whatever in the hell I want because I can really just tackle it all because I am really, really, really that good at lying is what this is giving, Ashton. It's giving, I can lie to put myself in any type of place I want because all I need to do is tap into my entitlement and voila, literally voila. We were the last line of defense. An actor and his foundation were the potential last line of defense. Thank you for making our point better than we could have made it ourselves. Actor, last line of defense, because Homeland Security and the FBI has no shred of budget to use to combat anything going on inside of hotels where you are going inside, where Danny Masterson is going inside, where Tom Cruise is going inside, when John Travolta is going inside, when... All manner of celebrities, y'all already know. Where Marisol Nichols for a slavery-free world is going inside, also getting paid to run this 501Cs to really, 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 really help kids. Kid you not. That's my day job. And I'm sticking to it. 
I'd like to tell you a story about a 15-year-old girl in Oakland. We'll call her Amy. Amy met a man online, uh, started talking to him. A short while later, they met in person. Within hours, Amy was abused, raped, and forced into trafficking. She was sold for sex. And this isn't an isolated incident. There's not much that's unusual about it. The only unusual thing is that Amy was found and returned to her family within three days using the software that we created, a tool called Spotlight. And in an effort to protect its capacity over time, I won't give much detail about what it does, but it's a tool that can be used by law enforcement to prioritize their caseload. It's a neural net. It gets smarter over time. It gets better and it gets more efficient as people use it. Well, maybe pitch us how Spotlight actually works because you might want to be using that Spotlight that is not technology. It's called just sheer transparency, sheer common sense transparency, Spotlight calling out corruption, calling out the disgusting dysfunction. That's all you needed. You didn't have to go and create any weird algorithm to shine the light on the very real corruption that apparently you have not a shred of a clue what in the hell we're saying. And it's working. In six months with 25% of our users reporting, we've identified over 6,000 trafficking victims, 2,000 of which are minors. This tool is in the hands of 4,000 law enforcement officials and 900 agencies. And we're reducing the investigation time by 60%. This tool is effective, it's efficient, it's nimble, it's better, it's smarter. Now, there's often a misconception about technology that in some way it is the generator of some evil, that it's creating job displacement and that it enables violence and malice acts. But as Literally, you couldn't be making our points better for ourselves, Ashton, because technology can be literally evil AF. And let me tell you about the L. Ron Hubbard technology, the one that your boy Danny was tapping to float his needle when he was admitted to the felonies he did admit to that you seem to have not a shred of a clue about. So that very real technology was being used to data mine and float Class A felonies, including but not limited to the convictions of your boy Danny Masterson. So that's the technology we'd like to highlight to you since apparently, I guess, the two decades that you were close to Danny, he never mentioned that L. Ron Hubbard had a technology all of his own. Right, Ashton? You have not a shred of a clue that there's technology that all these people were using to, to literally gloat at the expense of victims that you and Mila really want us to by the pitch, you really are all about advocating for victims. Well, apparently you uh, will advocate for any victim unless they were victims of your boy's disgusting hotel. As an entrepreneur and as a venture capitalist in the technology field, I see technology as simply a tool, a tool without will. The will is the user of that technology. And I think. Well, funny that you see technology as a tool, because that's what I would call you too, Mr. Kutcher, a tool that apparently can just blab its mouth. And then to double and triple down on the point that I just made, the tool of technology from L. Ron Hubbard does not just evil and good according to the user. That was the pitch that was given to Carol Masterson. That was the pitch that was given to Danny Masterson. Oh, L. Ron Hubbard's technology, you guys, is so amazing and wonderful. If you follow it to the letter, 
then you're doing it all right. If you change or alter a shred of a thing, then the technology is going to do all manner of bad things and glitches and it's going to really, you know, everything's going to go awry. Well, that was a false pitch. The technology couldn't have been more inducing people to commit felonies if the questions of so-called technology were asking, have you ever committed a criminal act or felony for, you have, for which you have never been caught? And just like that, that technology, boom, started to work right away, circumventing all the toothless laws of these United States who decided to outsource their legal problems to these people running these hotels that decided to reclassify practicing law without a license as, you know, having a jolly old time in some religious place. Well, we would love to hear what Thor has to say about these hotels that, you know, turns out weren't that religious, Ashton. And before your people at Thor want to pretend that they have not a shred of a clue of why in the hell we're at saying that these hotels are literally trafficking centers, tell them to Google federal child trafficking lawsuit in Tampa Bay court. In fact, tell them to Google Cone, Swift, and Graf attorneys at law, very serious attorneys, Ashton, that you can Google for yourself, the ones that put Keith Rainier, helped put Keith Rainier advocate on the behalf of the Nexium people are now the ones that are advocating for kids that were being transferred between Florida hotels and floating cathedrals, so-called floating cathedrals, a disgusting toxic ship that was floating around in the Bahamas across international waters with their passports locked up, Ashton. So Google that for yourself. Tell your team to Google it and start doing y'all's research ASAP. It's an important distinction. An airplane is a tool. It's a piece of technology. And under the right hands, it's used for mass global transit. And under the wrong hands, it can be flown into buildings. Technology can be used to enable slavery, but it can also be used to disable slavery. Skip us the pitch about technology. How about humanity? How about giving an F can disable slavery? Giving an F, not giving an F, can enable slavery. Let's leave your BS platitude about a, a plane and it could be used to crash into something. L. Ron Hubbard's technology cannot be used other than dehumanize others and enable that at scale. And if you want to counteract that, start telling your team to research what the auditor's code is from L. Ron Hubbard, that policy that states the rules of engagement of the extreme role plays that will be conducted in those hotels, where even your homie, Danny Masterson, couldn't escape as a child being locked up against their will, being asked disgusting, unthinkable questions, all sanctioned by their parents, including but not limited to Carol Masterson. So if you really want to advocate for your boy, you should be saying it is horrific that Danny Masterson was being interrogated about disgusting sexual things as a minor, given all my work in child trafficking where I really did learn that, you know, when the parents are up to no literal good, it can have a huge influence on that kid. And then that kid can become a criminal himself, like I have observed here. But, you know, give him a break because he did grow up in this hotel environment from hell where he was being told that 50K could float a felony. 
And, you know, in my experience, the big entrepreneur, venture capitalist that I am with access to every last shred of great legal advice, attorney, mind, think tank. Do you think that, you know, maybe we should be a little bit more lenient on him, given that he did have the type of disgusting childhood, your child hood from hell that your friend actually had in those hotels. So spare us this pitch about stupidity that has nothing to do with anything other than being a sales pitch. Let's find out what in the hell you're actually selling. For capitalists in the technology field, I see technology as simply a tool, a tool without will. The will is the user of that technology. And I think it's an important distinction. You know who else was a tool since we wanted to re-highlight this? Your homie, Danny Masterson, was a tool, okay? A tool that as a kid, he had not a shred of a clue what in the hell he was doing and what in the hell he was getting involved with. So we, as kids, became the tools of all of these adults. Ashton, very similar to what all trafficking victims experience for themselves, as if every last shred of human trafficking victim was not just being commoditized and used as tools. So add that to your pitch. Give that to your team and tell them to add that to their notes of how in the hell you guys are pitching this real quick. Disable slavery. And that's what we're doing. I alluded to. That's what his nonprofit is doing. Unless it has to do with disabling slavery inside of his best friend's hotels. You guys, if that is the case, then their technology falls apart, short circles, malfunctions, and nothing can be done to help a single shred of kid out of that disgusting trafficking situation that apparently they did get themselves into it because they did take it upon themselves as literal kids to sign, including but not limited to, very binding contracts as kids that nullified the possibility of anyone thinking that they could have been used as pawns inside a fraudulent ridden conspiracy to literally abduct kids in plain sight all homegrown in the United States of America, all homegrown and state sanctioned by the states of California and Florida, a red and blue issue, a bipartisan issue where both parties couldn't be more full of feces if they weren't literally swimming in a pool full of feces, literally. Now, it's interesting to note that the dark web was created in the mid-90s. It was a tool that was created by the Naval Research Lab called TOR, a tool with absolute purpose and positive intention for sharing intelligence communications anonymously. It's also been used to help people who are... are are being disenfranchised by their government within political dissent in, in oppressive regimes. But on the other side, it's used for trafficking, for drug trafficking, for weapons trafficking, and for human trafficking. And it's also the warehouse for some of the most offensive child abuse images in the world. Now, when the Department of Homeland Security called us and asked for our help and asked if we had a tool, I had to say no. And it devastated me. Well, you guys, this really did devastate Mr. Kucher, and we just got breaking news 
that Mr. Kucher, as devastated as he was here, has decided to step down from Thor. So the crisis management is real and the crisis management is happening in real time as we continue to out all of this corruption, as we continue to expose the highly questionable ties that Ashton Kutcher had to a convicted serial, you know what in the hell we mean exactly. Months, I had to go to sleep every night and think about that little girl that was still being abused. And the fact that if I built the right thing, we could save her. So that's what we did. And now, if I got that phone call from Greg, wherever you're at, <laughs> the answer would be yes. We've taken these investigation times of dark web material from three years down to what we believe can be three weeks. The tool is called Solus. Once again, I won't go into too much detail about the tool, but it's being used by 40 agencies across the world today in beta, and we believe that it's going to yield extraordinary results. And just like Spotlight, it gets smarter and more efficient and more cost effective over time. So where do we go from here? What do we need? Obviously, we need money. We need financing in order to build these tools. And there you go, guys. You see how he was just actually vying for money? Because the United States government should really be paying money to Hollywood actors that can almost cry on command about how really concerned this man really was about some girl that he learned that something was going on in the dark web. Well, the same man doesn't care if other underage minors were being trafficked inside of the hotels where he and Mr. Masterson had been known to frequent, had been doing all manner of shows at that hotel, all manner of let's go get a coffee at that hotel that was just a few blocks away from Danny's house. Celebrity Center is what it's called. And this man really did lose a lot of sleep over those girls, but didn't lose a shred of sleep seeing that minors were being utilized in that hotel at all. Technology is expensive to build, but the beauty of technology is once you build the warehouse, it gets more efficient and, and more cost effective over time. I might be able to present to you a government initiative where next year I come back and ask for less. And to me, that's, that's like, it seems extraordinary. The technology we're building is efficient. So you see how this is all just a fundraising pitch at Congress, you guys. Oh, yeah, we're going to really buy a warehouse. Oh, yeah, you know, next year I'll be here asking for less. And aren't I so efficient? Don't you just want to give me another Entrepreneur of the Year award real quick? With what type of credibility is this man pitching all of this, you guys? It's taken us this long to be able to see through this cheap AF salesman from hell trying to help himself while purporting that he really wants to help a lot of kids. Give us a bag. Literally. It works. It's nimble because traffickers change their modus operandi and we can change ours as well, just as efficiently, if not more efficiently as they can. It's enduring and it only gets smarter with time. We also are collecting data. We have KPIs. We actually understand that if we're delivering value, we increase our efforts in that area. If we're not delivering value, we shut it down. Your apology videos did not provide a shred of value 
Ashton. So let's start with those right there. So let's remove what's not actually producing a shred of value. And it seems like your organization with the compromise leadership, since as the saying goes, the fish stinks from the head. If the head is stinking, the entire fish is rotten. Stay away. And it's a quantifiable solution. One of my mentors told me, don't go after this issue if you can't come up with a quantifiable solution. We can quantify it and we can make the work that we're doing and the initiatives that you put forth accountable. Well, consider us your mentor today, Ashton. And as your mentors, we want to tell you, stay away from hotels that sign up kids to billion year contracts. Stay away from hotels where parents can pay to have their children abused for their own benefit, for their own amusement, for their own power trip. Stay away from those and stay away from lying nonstop. Stay away from being a pathological cheap car salesman. Asking Congress to give you money because you really want to figure out something. You really want the tech people in Silicon Valley who are also very a la L. Ron Hubbard, topping influencers to go, let's see how we can, you know, scheme and scam the idiots at Congress that have not a shred of critical thinking skills. Right or wrong? A spotlight was only enabled by the McCain Institution uh, and the full support of Cindy McCain and a man that I find to be not only a war hero, but a hero to this issue, John McCain. It wasn't just created by them. There was extraordinary support from the private sector. Uh, company Digital Reasoning out of Tennessee stepped up to the plate. They offered us effort. They offered us engineers. They offered us support and pro bono work. We've had the support of companies that oftentimes war with each other from Google to Microsoft to AWS to Facebook. And some of our other technology initiatives include many, many other private companies. So shout out to all these private companies that really want to give a lot of pro bono to Ashton because it's not like he's not scamming them too. It's not like he's using leveraging his position as this big influencer for people to want to come and work with him. Well, it's called do your due diligence on who you're going to invest, do your due diligence on who you're going to go partner up with because if y'all don't do a shred of due diligence on your partnerships, including but not limited to governmental and private partnerships, this is what happens. Videos like this will get made exposing y'all's pathetic scam playing out in literal plain sight, no less. It's vital to our success. These private-public partnerships are the key. The third thing I'd like to highlight is the pipeline. You know, we sit at the intersection of discovery of these victims, but the pipeline in and the pipeline out are just as vital and just as important, and addressing them are just as important. I'd, I'd like to highlight one thing in particular, that being the foster care system. There are 500,000 kids in foster care today. I, I was astonished to find out that 70% of the inmates in the prison across this country have touched the foster care system. And 80% of the people on death row were at some point in time exposed to the foster care system. Yeah, guys, imagine Ashton being so astonished. His words literally quote astonished that people that are in death row 
went through that system. Well, what in the literal hell do you think Scientology was, Ashton, in terms of abuse of kids? Instead of complete and disgusting, abominable erosion of all boundaries between adults and minors. And as you sit there with your little suit and your little talking points that you just parrot out without a shred of self-awareness as you're opening and closing your mouth real quick. I mean, again, you guys, it's like, it doesn't it prove that he's so sophisticated that he really does understand psychology at a deep level, literally connecting dots such as, oh, geez, look at all these inmates. They were just foster kids once upon a time. Oh, look, my literal friend of two decades, just got convicted for life. Never mind that he didn't get death row. Never mind, he only got convicted for life, no less. Was what an example and someone that he looked up to and, you know, a literal does everything great and respects everybody and never discriminated anyone and never literally lied in his entire life and never touched a drug and he was like literally your moral compass. So with what mouth can you pitch two things at the same time that your big wisdom and your big research and your astonishment over how many people end up convicted in death row because they were abused as children. And when it comes to your homie, you cannot be a shred of an advocate for him about his childhood. Maybe you should have really gone in. Jar Jar Mado, I implore you. Carol Masterson was a horrendous, disgusting momager from hell that was helicoptering all of us, collecting all manner of blackmail and undue influence on us so that she could literally sink us and she could literally keep us under her literal thumb. Because that's what blackmail does, you guys. That's what undue influence is all about. How do I keep these people under my thumb? Well, you know what? Elron Hubbard came up with that technology. Ashton. Elron Hubbard came up with that literal technology that I guess you would know all about technology, right? Right? Fifty percent of these kids will not graduate high school and ninety five percent of them will not get a college degree. Are you talking about the Sea Org or are you talking about the foster care? Because we really literally lost track since none of us completed high school and none of us have a shred of a degree. And believe you me, the percentage actually sounded a lot too cushy. We have less percentage of kids that completed high school being abducted into your boy's Danny Masterson hotel. Go ask him. He would know. It's not like they didn't all know. It's not like this wasn't every literal child's experience not going to high school when they were being abducted to join the Sea Org. Literally. But the most staggering statistic that I found was that foster care children are four times more likely to be exposed to sexual abuse. That's a breeding ground for trafficking. I promise you that's a breeding ground for trafficking. But the... I mean, again, you guys, what more double, triple down, stupid ass analogy do we need to be pitched by this man? Yes. Those kids are susceptible to the literal SA. What do you think so many of us have already gone on the record, Ashton, and exposed the SA that we were being exposed to in those disgusting hotels? As if we're not literally sick and tired 
of having our experience of full-blown SA, of full-blown exactly what in the literal hell your best buddy got convicted of being perpetrated on us as kids, never mind that we didn't expect that or experience that as adults going to a Hollywood party. We experienced that as kids stuck in the hotel. So, and it works both ways too, right? Because it's not like your buddy for life, Danny himself was maybe not what subjected to SA himself as a young child. Go ask Carol. She would know. Hey, Carol, yo, did that ever came up in Danny's audits that he was ever essayed himself? How about as a child? How about then, Carol? And what was done to Danny when that was found out? What was he told? Because as if that's not having an influence in how that narcissistic psychopath that they didn't want to take a shred of responsibility when going through the whole court system who made a mockery of the courts purporting that it would have been you know, so easy for women to just literally make it all up because really the courts can wait to literally help anybody that makes up anything as if the courts don't already have an almost impossible barrier of entry to even get heard in the first place whatsoever. So apparently you, who seems to be so in touch with legal intricacies of this specific nature of criminal activity. Never mind that you're just some clueless, infantile actor of Hollywood that doesn't have a shred of a clue that is not the entrepreneur venture capitalist that you can't stop pitching you are. So make that make sense for once in your literal life. The reason I looked at foster care is that it's a microcosm. It's, it's a sample set that we have pretty extraordinary data around to date, even though we can't seem to fix it. It's a microcosm for what happens when displacement happens abroad as the unintended consequences of our actions or inactions in the rest of the world. When people are left out, when they're neglected, when they're not supported, and when they're not given the love that they need to grow, it becomes an incubator for trafficking. And this refugee crisis, if, if, you, if we want to be serious about ending slavery. Oh, please, Ashton, please spare us the fucking pitch about how the refugee crisis, that's the problem. I mean, again, you guys, this man just told us what happens to children that don't get the love that they need. And how that's so horrible to them and psychologically can be so affecting them. Never mind that Ashton knows who Carol Masterson is. He knows what that woman is capable of. He knows what that woman normalized for herself. He knows how Danny literally, literally was a subservient being managed by his mom individual that had to report everything to his mom. There was no shred of privacy available to any kids. There was no love. When Scientology parents are abusing you at nauseum, it cannot coexist that they were also loving us, right or wrong, Ashton. When abuse is 99.99% part of the relationship. How was the love supposed to be there so that Danny didn't become the deranged, deranged convicted exactly what he got convicted of is, literally. We cannot ignore it and we cannot ignore our support for this issue in that space, because otherwise we're gonna deal with it for years to come. The outbound pipeline, there's just not enough beds. The bottom line is, once, people, once someone is exposed to this level of abuse, it's a mental health issue. 
and there aren't enough beds, there's not enough support, and we have to have the resources on the other side. Otherwise, the recidivism, the recidivism rates are through the roof. It's, it, it's astonishing because when Maslow's hierarchy and needs are not being met, people will resort to survival. And if this is their means of survival and the only source of love that they have in their life, that's what they go for. So we have to address the pipeline out and we have to create support systems on the other end. It's not an entitlement. It's a demand to end slavery. How many more times do you have to demand to end slavery unless is slavery perpetrated by your buddies, Laura and Danny? We still don't have any data that states that you were paying to be part of those hotels yourself. But we do have a ton of Scientologists, including but not limited to ex-Scientologists that are coming forward with all manner of stories about times they saw you at parties with Danny. So let's not pretend that you also didn't just tell us how the lack of love in being raised in an environment where you're being manipulated, tokenized, dehumanized, and abused. It's not the worst thing possible that can happen that can really have a problem with mental health. So it's not like you're not saying mental health is not real, like Carol Masterson would say, right or wrong. My fourth and final recommendation is the bifurcation of sex trafficking and labor trafficking. They're both aberrations. They're both awful. They're both slavery, and they're both punitive, in fact. But the solution sets are highly differentiated. When you look at sex trafficking, a victim is most often present at the incident of commerce. And, and this, this provides an opportunity for, for drastic intervention. Whereas in labor trafficking, the victims are being hidden behind the manufacturers and the merchandisers. And it requires an entirely different set of legislation and proactivity and enforcement in order to shut it down. Now, there's a lot of rhetoric that's going on in the world right now about job creation in the United States. Well, if we want to create jobs in the United States, I would ask you to consider eliminating slavery from the pipelines of corporations. Because a lot of that slavery is happening abroad. And if we ask those corporations under... More staged platitudes about how the slavery happens abroad and how that slavery doesn't take place at the hotels where my friend Danny Masterson is a paid member to in a hotel where my friend Laura Prepon was also a paid member of. So these American people really want to always take it about how, oh, this is all happening somewhere else, but not really here. And the reality is that it's a pathetic pitch. It's all it is. For extreme pressure. If you don't change it, you are going to be penalized. And if you don't clean up that pipeline, it's going to mean trouble. And, and they're, they're forced with two decisions. They can either clean up the pipeline abroad, or they can move the jobs to the United States of America where they can be regulated and supported. The, bringing... Imagine pitching America having regulation and support while you literally have a child trafficking hotel operating in full force a few blocks away where your bestie lives, a few blocks away where you go and party all the time when Mr. Kutcher was, you know, living it up at Danny's house, literally. Jobs to America can be the consequence of doing the right thing or it can be the consequence of doing the wrong thing. But that choice is up to you. Now, it's not lost on me that all of this disruption in our marketplaces is going to have economic backlash. Like, that is not lost on me at all. But I ask you, 
Do you believe that Abraham Lincoln had to consider the economic backlash of shutting down the cotton fields in the South when he shut down slavery? Because I'm sure that weighed on his mind. What seems to be 100% lost on you, Ashton, right about now is that exact platitude you just blabbed about right now. That seems to be extremely lost on you. That literally there's child slaves inside of your buddy's hotel. Influencer of the year, moral campus, person that you went to advice all the time. The most docile, graceful, respectful man you've ever met in your entire life that didn't want a shred of a drug. That is a drunk, but didn't want drugs, just drinking. So start reconciling the stupidity of your statements real quick. Ask those PR people that you employ to please make you make sense or start actually taking accountability for what in the hell you've done. You know, happiness can be given to no man. It must be earned. It must be earned through, through generosity and through purpose. But the right to pursue it The right to pursue it is every man's right. And I beg of you that if you give people the right to pursue it, what you may find in return is happiness for yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much. What would give us a ton of happiness right about now is to hear actual truth being stated, actual accountability being taken. Instead of all this platitudes about happiness and everyone has the right to pursue that happiness unless you are a kid that was handed down a billion-year contract to sign to have their entire formative years stolen, not in Cambodia, you guys, believe it or not, not in Cambodia. In Clearwater, Florida, in Los Angeles, California, at Celebrity Center International, at L. Ron Hubbard Way, a blue and red issue, you guys. So, yeah, I'm sure that now that Ashton really did step down from his role as the Thor whatever, a lot is changing. Well, let's see what in the literal hell actually changes. Because right now, Ashton is following the advice of the people that are telling him how to literally launder his soiled AF reputation. So right now they're in full-blown crisis mode not full-blown transparency, let's take real accountability mode. They're just trying to put up fires with the very easy ways that if you pay a lot of money, apparently you can get out of any type of trouble. And believe you me, Ashton is a master at literally soiling himself and then a few months later being pitched as the funny guy, ha, ha, ha. Well, you know what? We are sick of your jokes, Ashton. We couldn't be more disgusted. We'll continue to expose more facts and more things that are being literally developing as we've been exposing more and more facts, you guys. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for continuing to write down your questions to the LAPD, the LA Times, the Tampa Bay Times, and the Clearwater PD that apparently are all in on enabling what in the hell happens in those hotels. 
that apparently can have a shred of critical thinking skills for themselves to make anything stop. Where apparently the Constitution of these United States could not be any more toothless because the real cotton fields where the slavery was taking place in America were moved into luxury hotels where celebrities came in and were acting as literal slave masters, deranged, completely filled with cognitive dissonance, all thanks to their master and commander, indicted, convicted felon, L. Ron Hubbard. So keep posting your questions, keep answering what the call is. Can we get some real people wanting to help some real children and not all of these 501Cs collecting God knows how much money from Congress to really develop a lot of technologies that literally smell like literal pieces of, you know, exactly what in the hell we mean. I thank you guys for watching and I will see you all extremely soon. Bye-bye.